you here to this, uh, this Justice uh, Summit. I think people agree it's been a fantastic kick-off uh, to the summit uh, today to go to an absolutely packed uh, room, standing room only. Um, this uh, workshop is uh, about uh, building campaigns locally. Um, we've got Pilgrim Tucker, who's from uh, United Community, she's the organiser for London and the East. And we've got uh, John uh, Davies from Leeds Hand Off Our Homes. If there's anyone here from Manchester Anti Back Bedroom Tax Campaign, please make yourself known. I've got someone down to speak if. Um, I wasn't told that I was speaking. So. <laughs> <laughs> speak, 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 speak the floor. I can give you a brief overview of what's been going on in my well, there's going to be plenty of time for uh, 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 discussion uh, anyway. Um, firstly, and then I think I'll introduce uh, John Davis from the Hands Off Our Homes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Liz, from Hands Off Our Homes, and we can start with a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait till I finish. Uh, <laughs> Hands Off Our Homes has been going for a long time in Leeds because back in 2005, there was a project by the City Council to flatten half the council houses and go into a redevelopment project and regenerate the whole area by building affordable homes, community centres, doctor surgeries, libraries and all the rest of it. And we said that's a load of rubbish and we said it's not going to work. Don't flatten all these perfectly good council houses. But no, they went ahead and then 2007 came along. The bottom fell out of the market. The Bellway Homes sold its first 50 houses back to the City Council, who turned them over to the Alamos and made them into council houses. Well, you could have cut <coughs> Bellway Homes out of it uh, and saved yourself a lot of money. So we were around. Obviously, once that whole project was hit by the credit crunch, uh, the financial crisis, things went a little bit quiet until early last year when the City Council and the Residential Social Landlords, the housing associations, started to send letters out to people telling them about the bedroom tax, uh, the under-occupancy rates, uh, and the percentages that people will be asked to pay. Um, it was Liz actually who told me about her letter, and I didn't believe her. I said, they can't chuck you out of your house. Serious in its detail than we initially realised. Uh, and so we thought we'd better do something about it. Uh, we therefore produced uh, leaflets, basic leaflets telling people about what's going on in Leeds. Uh, nothing particularly special, the information is there, you can get it for the Freedom Information Request, you can obviously get it by going on council websites and finding out all the nitty gritty of all the details. But what we found out from that that in Leeds there were 7,500 council tenancies that were going to be affected and that there were about 1,500 residential social landlord tenancies that were going to be affected. Clearly, a lot of people, 9,000 tenancies, potentially something in the region of 25 to 30,000 people were going to be affected by the, the bedroom tax. Um, and people didn't know much about it. The council did, did tell people, and they sent them lots of information about what they could do. They said to people, you can get a job. <coughs> if you're in part-time employment, you can work more hours. Uh, you can go on the register and swap your house or you can downsize, or you can take in a lodger. Um, people then got on the platform with councils through wobblers and said, well, we're not sure they actually can take in a lodger. And then someone started to say, well, if you take in a lodger, you have to take someone in off our council waiting list. Uh, and I said, I'm not taking a stranger into my house, all that sort of thing. And then said, oh, we didn't say that, that's wrong, and all sorts of things. Um, news went out that foster carers were going to be exempt, Disabled people are going to be exempt. People with kids under five are going to be exempt. And then you read the small print, and it's rubbish. All they're talking about is a small pot of money called discretionary housing allowance uh, that could possibly be used to help such people that I've just listed. But clearly, there's not, there's not enough money. It's not going to go around. So we banged our heads against the brick wall, I think it's probably fair to say, for probably three or four months, going around, putting stalls up with our banner across the pace table, handing out leaflets to tell people, oh, I've heard about that, yeah, I've heard about that. And people didn't really think it was going to happen. Um, until about a month ago, when things started to gradually kick into gear, um, when, because we've been going for such a long time, and some clever person, I must say, if you've got a young person who knows how to use computers, 
get a website up, links to Twitter, Facebook, God knows what. It's far too young for me to be knowing how to do it. But it's a, me a method of getting the message out that some people can use extremely effectively. Because what it meant is we were suddenly talking to people, I was getting phone calls from people in Plymouth, Hull, Wrexham, Newcastle, <coughs> Manchester, Liverpool, all sorts, because we had a blog, we had a, we had a leaflet which was on DCH website, and they were picking the number off it saying, what are you doing? Not only were that, those people getting in touch, but we had Radio Leeds, Radio Air, Yorkshire Evening Post, Yorkshire Post, um, the Independent came to one of our neighbourhood meetings, um, and so things started to, to go round and round. And, you know, it's the, a bloke was on the phone two days ago, living in Leeds, says, I have a friend in London who saw your name in a national newspaper and gave me your number to get in touch. I'm 52 years of old, I've got, uh, of age, I've got mental health problems, and I'm going to have to move. What, what can you do to help me? So word spreads in all sorts of various ways, and just think imaginatively <coughs> as how to get the word out. Because once the word is out, um, we have then started to say, well, how are we, what are we going to do with these people? In Leeds, we took the decision, or I think probably unspoken, that if the shit hits the fan, um, we are going to have to protect people from being evicted from their homes. Uh, that's going to take some time to come around because you've got to get into arrears of rent first. Uh, so ultimately, we have to be in for the long haul. Initially, then it's perhaps a different matter. It's advising people about um, the problems they're going to face, who it affects, and so on and so forth. Um, we then had a little slogan came out of keep calm and stay put. Um, thank you. And the, the councillors don't, well, don't like it. I'll come on to that briefly because I do think I'd like to have help with how to deal with Labour councillors at some stage during the, 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 the day. But we had the slogan of keep calm and stay put. Because people, officers for Leeds City Council were saying that with eight, eight, 9,000 tenancies potentially to be moved because of the bedroom tax, it was going to take something like five years to do it. Because you can't move people immediately. Uh, at the start of April last year, Leeds City Council, as I've told you, said they thought they had 7,500 tenancies to move. On January the 31st of this year, they said they had 6,800 to move. So they'd only moved 700 people by voluntarily downsizing or moving or whatever. And some people do want to move. But what it means is that there, there is no way that in the next three weeks they are going to get rid or downsize or move or get into proper sized properties. Um, the, the people that are left. So people are bound to fall into arrears and people are bound to get panicky and scary. And that's where another string of thought we had was people are going to be scared, isolated in their own home. Because if you go home, you shut the door uh, and you're left by yourself. You get your own individual letter which tells you how much money you're going to pay. And in fact, the housing associations have sent letters out and list some telepersonal details. She got a letter saying she had to pay about £20 a week more uh, when it comes in. She thought it was going to be about £40. Pounds. And then the letter comes through and it's 20 Leeds City Council are going to send letters out to all their tenants on the 24th of March, which means about the week before Easter, they're going to get hammered with the reality of what the bedroom tax actually means. Um, how many bedrooms are they going to move into? In Leeds, um, the vast majority of the problem is 4,900 people needing one bedroom properties. The number of one bedroom properties available, <coughs> last time I looked on the council website, 43. Uh, it's just impossible. Therefore, keep calm and stay put. It becomes logical because of the people who, I'm sorry, you know what I mean when I say need a one bedroom property. If they, don't, if they can't move into them because they don't exist, the people who want a two-bedroom property can't move into theirs. Because it leads, leads uh, you to your new post. They're going to force families into tower blocks. Well, they can't because the tower blocks are full, unless you're going to double up. Um, and so this is an argument I think we can have. Also, the council say, on average, it takes them £3,200 to take a family to court for eviction. Now, there's another workshop going on about evictions and what have you. But I don't think the council are absolutely sure that they're going to get an eviction because you have a thing called the Human Rights Act, which requires people to take proportionate action and re uh, requires the uh, right to a f uh, family life to be taken into account. And that's going to affect people as well. So 
But that, I think, is a, a, poss a possible slogan that can, can make sense. Um, other people want to say too much as well. Uh, can I go on to the <coughs> Labour Council? Because I do not want to be sectarian at all. Um, but, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. <coughs> when we started, we started off, we're going, we don't think that the people, tenants, they're not political people, they've probably never been to a political meeting in their life before. We're not going to pull them into the centre of Leeds on a cold winter's night for a meeting. So we went out to the localities. I got a working men's club or a room or a room in a church or something like that and started to have meetings. Now the Labour Council were invited to our first meeting in an area called, called Middleton, uh, which we were holding in a church hall. And they nodded the vicar and said that we are all strange, we probably have right wing sympathies, we are probably going to divide the communities and you should not use your uh, church hall to have our meeting. And the vicar pulled it. Um, we then had a meeting at another area in Seacroft, and the biggest town we were all right, actually. We talked a lot of common sense, and people there appreciated it. So we went back to Middleton. We had a meeting there. We had a follow-up meeting last night, and the three councillors for the Middleton who had refused to come to the first two meetings turned up and basically tried to sabotage us. Because what we're saying to them is, are you going to implement the bedroom tax? Are you going to evict? when people fall into arrears. Because they're all very good at saying Labour opposes the veteran tax. And when you've got a Labour council who is forced to implement it, they say, well, it's not our fault. It's, it's the Westminster government. I say, yeah, what are you going to do about it? How have you been elected to put people on the streets? Um, so <coughs> our next step forward will be, oh, we've got the March the, six, the 16th. Uh, there are meant to be demonstrations run by um, left Labour, I believe. Uh, Leeds has got one, they're meeting in the university and they're going to do two hours leafleting. They've made no contact with us whatsoever. Uh, though we've been in existence for months. We've been on the radio, the TV, <coughs> the paper. And it really is a bit disappointing that we must be working with these Labour people who will really seriously want to oppose all aspects of the bedroom tax. Not to put it off for 12 months while they do some research into people with disability. But if they really want to oppose it, so we're going to work, go to those meetings, I think, on the 16th, and work with those people and say, what are you going to do about it? Um, is that enough for the time being? You can ask questions. It's enough for the time being. One last point is, campaigns always cost money. I'm actually a Unite member and have been for far too long. Uh, so my union branch is very good at donating funds because Unite nationally is linked to DCH, <laughs> offers them uh, accommodation in the Unite offices. Therefore, you go to your union branches and say, give us some money. Uh, I'm speaking over the next week at uh, Whole Trades Council, uh, I'm speaking at the uh, Unison Stewards in Leeds, the uh, Unite Reps in Leeds, so you can get the word out because people talk about the links between the unions and the campaign, and we can do that, and we can also get some money and some facilities to make sure you've got the wherewithal to do it. So, I'm not saying we've got the, the blueprint for success, uh, we haven't had a demonstration yet in Leeds, we're thinking about right. it. Um, but uh, if other people have other ideas, I'd be happy to have those just as much as you might have enjoyed having mine. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks a lot, John. Um, our next speaker is going to be from the last one. Hi, so I spent quite a few of you know about the UNITE community. Um, basically, it's the new um, section of UNITE, community membership, which is open to people who aren't in regular paid work. Um, so that's older people, unemployed people, people at home with young kids, um, and so on, as well as students. Um, so we've been around in reality for about six months, um, and the welfare cuts have been a concern since the off, since as soon as I've been um, involved with it. Um, I'll just ask a question of you. How many people here live in London or the South East region? Good. Good.